The synergistic interplay of mitochondrial respiration and cellular homeostasis suggests a potential predisposition towards idiopathic tachysystole, especially in individuals presenting with pre-existing subclinical quantum entanglement. Therefore, we recommend a daily regimen of polarized water and listening to whale songs played backwards, unless, of course, they are allergic to Tuesdays. I uh, never claim to be a genius, but I try my damn best to explain stuff in a way that we can all understand. So, the purpose of this video is more of uh, me releasing some negative energy, right? So I need, I need a friend to talk to right now, basically, and you're it. I'm gonna tell you the day I had. Somebody showed this to me and they're like, how come your coil can't do that? And I literally lost it, okay? Um, why is my coil not doing this? First of all, it does that. Second, this coil right there is they're cheating. So, so before we go down this rabbit hole, I want you guys to understand the first things first, okay? Any amount of PMF helps. It doesn't matter even if it comes from a grounding sheet, which by the way, creates PMF because the ground and electrical socket is extremely dirty and there's a flow of electron going through the wire of the grounding sheet, therefore there's a PMF happening. And that's the only thing that grounding sheet do for you, right? They don't ground you. They expose you to a really dirty PMF. But that's a story for another day. This particular system we're going to see right there, okay? I'm going to use this as an example. The system works, okay? It makes PEMF. It does help the body to recover. It does all that stuff. The way they're going about it to sell it is not my favorite flavor kind of speech, okay? Second, it's not optimized at all right like we can we can do much better the analogy that I gave a lot of the time is that you know we used to have a candle that was awesome to navigate our way inside of our dark cave right nowadays we have LEDs and we have good reflector so let's stick to what we know works best let's not try to reinvent the wheel with older archaic kind of things now let's go back about the reason why I'm telling you there's a little bit of cheating happening here so I want you to notice here that the magnet sticks to the triangle and it doesn't release, right? The only way you can that is if there is magnet, permanent magnet built into the triangle. And there is. And the guy actually explains how he builds it and he tells the people that he put that many magnets inside, right? Now there are new cadmium magnet, rare earth magnet, which usually run between three and 5,000 Gauss each, right? Of a static magnetic field. And we all know that a static magnetic field does nothing. The magnetic field has to change to induce any type of voltage into somebody's body. Simulation. Now, let me explain to you. The green lines are your magnetic lines, okay? So, and remember, um, the magnetic field has to change for something to happen. Right now, nothing is changing. You can see the light bulb here is not being lit up. If we're to compare that to a PMF system, for example, um, we cannot rotate the human being around the magnetic field. So we rotate the magnetic field around the human being. And what we're doing, we're pulsing it on and off, right? So we send electricity through the coils on and then remove electricity, we turn it off. On, off, on, off. Remember that, it's going to be important down the road here. But just look at this. In this instance, we're going to rotate the magnet, and then you're going to see the energy being transferred through this. And this, imagine this is your cell right here, and the brighter the cell is, the more energy the cell is getting. So if I go slow, you can see that there's a tiny little bit of energy. And if I speed it up, there's a ton of energy. You can see the light flashing right now because that's the uh, magnetic field pulsing basically, even though we're, if I was rotating this magnet at like 10,000 RPM, then the light would stay on all the time, right? Okay, so that's first rule. It's called um, Faraday's laws of induction, okay? The magnetic field has to change for something to happen. Now this example, um, 
it simulates uh, a sine wave type uh, of induction from like that's what we use on motors and transformers because that's what we use on the wall either 50 hertz or 60 hertz sine wave now in PMF this the P stands for pulsing and we pulse it and I'm going to show you the next fundamental things you need to understand okay remember when the magnetic field does not change nothing happens watch this I want you to focus on the blue square right here, the induced electromotive force measured in volts, okay? And we're going to supply the voltage. We're going to do a sine wave, which is the same way we did with the, uh, the last example, run. I want you to notice here, this is the induced voltage into the ball, basically. Look at the amplitude here and what we're getting out of it, right? Um, yeah. It is now let's go to a square wave, right? I'm gonna stop this, I'm gonna change that to square wave, and then we're gonna keep it like that. So, right here, we're pulsing into a square wave. Look at the amount of uh, induced electromotive force we're getting into the cell, it's a tremendous amount of energy, right? And that's why we always have to do a square wave. Not only that, look how long it stays on, right? And we got nothing, just got a huge jolt, and then it just goes down to zero. Huge jolt, down to zero. So it has to change, that's the proof right there, it has to change. I measured it on some of my videos too with, um, uh, with my oscilloscope. So two big takeaway. One is we need a magnetic field to induce a current to something, and the magnetic field has to change, right? A square wave, because it changes really quickly, induce more energy than a sine wave. Those are the big two takeaway right now. Remember this. Pop quiz. Which example here has the most powerful coil? This beautiful bouncing kangaroos right there. Or option B, and you make the modification. This little quiet cricket that barely moves my magnet. I know a lot of you know the answer, so be quiet. Let the people that don't know answer. Okay, I'm not gonna give you the answer right away, right? Um, I'm, we're gonna do it again with a different visual this time. And we're gonna have two options again, A and B. And then you pick which one you think is the strongest magnetic field coming out of that coil. Option A. Now option B. Look at that guy a little wiggling. Okay, the answer is neither they're the same. They're the exact same power. I did not change either the voltage or the amperage or the resistance. I did not change the flow of electrons. I did not change one thing. Just one tiny little thing I changed, right? The duty cycle. Let me prove it to you. Uh, th this is where I get either fiery and really excited or write down, shake my head, okay? What you saw there has nothing to do with the law of magnetism, okay? It has everything to do with Newton's first law, the law of inertia, that states that an object in motion tends to stay in motion, an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless an external force comes and changes that, right? Okay, all right. 
let's go six year old level. You have a car stuck in the snow, a Canadian, right? You get five people that come in to push, but they push on you for a duty cycle of 1%, which is like, you know, one hundred of a second. You just go, huh, huh, the car's not gonna move, right? The same amount of people, but this time they push out 100% duty cycle. So everybody push the same amount of force, but they constantly push. Then you'll get the car out of this mud or the snow. That's what you just visualized. Now, let's have some fun and let's run the triangle on my simulator. And then we're gonna run it against a donut shaped coil. We're gonna see what we get out of this. Here we're seeing the triangle. Do you see all the little black spots you got everywhere? Those are all dead spots basically where the magnetic field is being interacted with. My, my software cannot even draw the magnetic flux line. Now here's the donut shaped coil. You'd be like, well Steve, what's the difference? Well, this one is a lot cleaner. You don't see all that black spot in there. Now watch this. This is what happened when you compare both of them at 10 amps each. Do you see the difference now? Okay. Now let's increase the amperage of the triangle. Let's make it 80 amps. Right here we have 80 amps on the little triangle and 10 amps on the coil. This is what I was telling you. Optimize, 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 right? Now let's bump the triangle to 200 amps. Even at 200 amps going through the triangle, the 10 amps on the donut shape still kick his ass. This is what I mean. You can have a hundred candles down your cave. It doesn't mean it's as bright as a 10 watt LED. So now you have a ginormous triangle that's really uncomfortable to use. You can't put that under your pillow to go to sleep. You can't really put that on your, on your chest or on your arms. You can't really do much with it because it's so big and cumbersome. On the other hand, the mini mat that I show you guys how to build is nice and flat and we can use it in different places. You can put it behind your back when you drive, you can put it on your lap, you can keep it there, you can put it under your pillow and go to sleep on it, right? This is what I mean by optimizing and making something better. The triangle was a good idea 100 years ago, right? Now we moved on, right? Not only that, that was one coil I showed you. The mini mat has six. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so on the left side you got my mini mat. I can only put three coils because it's uh, two dimensional. I cannot even put six, right? So we'll get a side view of it. And then you can see I got 10 amps per coil on the mini mat and I got 10 amps on the triangle mat too. Okay, so this is my rant about today. Because you see a magnet moving, bouncing around like crazy, it doesn't mean nothing, right? It's about how the field is distributed, right? The donut shaped coil air core is the best emitter for making PEMF. You can come up with all kinds of weird ass freaking shape and everything else. You're never going to beat it. Not to date anyway, right? Does it work? Yes, it works. Any amount of PEMF is good PEMF, right? It helps. But, you know, yes, a candle will give you a little bit of light in the cave and it's better than nothing. But I'd rather have an LED flashlight that will last a long time and actually can see where I'm going. 10, 15, 100 years from now, they may look at this video and say, oh, these guys, they're talking about candles and LED. Now we have like photonic light, which is like blah, 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 right? Great. I'm really happy for you, future whatever. But in the meantime, this is what we got. So let's do this right. Now I'm going to show you something else that I'm working on right now. Now you see that's the black one that I showed you in the mini mat with six coils. You see the blue one behind, slightly bigger? Yeah, I squeezed 10 coils in that one. The Weber out of it is out of this world because the coils are so packed together, right? And yes, Weber, 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 this is what it's all about. It's not about the gauze. The formula to calculate Weber, gauze is included in it already, right? So, but that's a rant for another day. This video has been long enough. I want to thank you very much for listening to me right here, right now. And yeah, you guys stay safe. Talk to you guys soon. How was it? Did it feel okay? No. It was all right. Like, I mean, I really wanted to talk about this on the website there, but you know, I don't like to talk bad about people. But like this one really kind of, just check this out. I just want to show it to you. Just watch this. So he's got this 
title there right and I copy that and I was like what is that you know like didn't make any sense to me and I just kind of quickly ask Gemini there and this is what she said right what he said whatever but it's like exactly what I was thinking it's just technical jargon to try to sound smart right but at the end of the day it's just me guessing I guess you know what I mean like I don't know but it just sounds fishy as hell and then the other thing he talked about was that Vortex Matematic. I never even heard of that before. And then I checked it out and it's, once again, it's, it's a really weird branch of math that's on the fringe of pseudoscience, right? Like it just doesn't really amount to much yet. So, uh, and it's designed to find patterns. So I don't know how you can use Vortex Matematic to calculate, um, EMF, like electromagnetic field, and the the chaotic thing that he claims that he's having in there, like that's why I made that intro the way I did, right? Like with this fancy, I just put a bunch of fancy word in there that meant nothing to nobody, and then at the end I just made that whale song singing backwards, except on Tuesday if you're allergic, right? But it's just to kind of show. I really wanted to go down that rabbit hole, but once again I didn't. But anyway, thanks for asking.